You know, in sashimi, we say moritsuke, which is balance, and everything has a purpose. Ingredients are the paint, knives the paintbrush, and the customer's inspiration. But there's always a structured balance and the canvas or the plate. You've got something you've spent a lot of time striving to make just right. You want to put it on something that allows your work to shine. Chefs frequently come here and they say, they'll borrow some plates and they'll take them back and they'll see what they want to make in terms of size, in terms of the color of the piece. Each one of these is handmade. They're all related to each other. Nobody is an identical twin. If you're willing to have a handmade piece that has a little evidence of the potter's hand, mm -hmm. then this, is, this would be a good choice. And so many potters are like that. What we do for most of our work is make things out of slabs. It kind of looks like a giant uh, pasta roller. And what we do is roll out sheets of clay, and the bowls are formed. We figured out which shapes, and we do it bit by bit by bit. So we start with a bigger bowl, and then press it smaller and smaller until it can slide easily into the final mold. So that dries, and then eventually it shrinks a little bit, and you can pop it out. And this one actually is a finished one. This is the step before finishing. So it's been in the kiln one time, it's got the glaze on it, and it's ready to go into the kiln the second time. This piece right by your hand has been made on the slab roller, formed, dry, and is ready to go in the kiln for the first time. And here's what the bowls look like now. You can see it's a different color. That's the gray clay. It's white. Put the glaze on, put it in the kiln, then it's done. Who taught you how to make? Who taught me how to make it? Well, you know, it's funny when you're a small person, things make big impressions. And um, my parents used to send me to sleepaway camp. There was a Japanese man who did a demonstration for the camp on a potter's wheel. He put on a blindfold, he set up the potter's wheel, and he threw a piece of pottery in front of the whole camp and I was taken. I was like, that's magic. I want to do that magic. And I was, just a, I was really a little kid. Sometimes I've thought, is that pure stubbornness or was it smart? But it, I like what I do. I like creating things. It's nothing more satisfying than at the end of the day, and you probably feel this too. You see what you've done. So these are all just different pieces. This is what a, one of the bowls that's very similar to the one we've been working on today. That one's the Hollywood Bowl. And the Hollywood Bowl is a bowl that has a flat bottom and straight up and down sides. Beautiful. And do you name all of your bowls? I do. I <laughs> name all the different shapes. I have some very fun names. I've got, I've got Hollywood Bowl. I've got a surreal bowl, which is like a cereal bowl. Mm -hmm. And then I have the Brooklyn Bowl. And um, I. Sally Bowl for the uh, character in Cabaret. Really? So I have some fun with my names. What, what do you think? Is that a bowl that you would use? Yeah, actually, right away I would just do something that would elevate the height, so I would do something that would come up mm. to about here. So, because nice. you kind of get drawn into it because it's a high lip. Right. For different cuisines, all different styles, but just already ideas, but every chef would have so many different ideas. Some will actually would want two hands to slurp, mm -hmm. some would want something dramatic, some would want just a little piece and let the bowl shine. Everyone has their own idea. Mm -hmm. It's their own canvas, but it's great. I love the texture of it. I love oh, the finish you. of it. It's inside smooth, outside is nice and rough. And of course, maintenance, cleaning these things. Easy peasy. Easy yeah. peasy, exactly. Yeah. Beautiful. Definitely. Within ceramics, there are many different types of clay. There's earthenware, stoneware, china clay, porcelain. Normally, clay comes from the bottom of a mountain or, or um, a riverbed, or it's just it's dug from the earth, and depending on where you are, and different mineral deposits create the different color clays. <laughs> so it's from planet Earth. It's from planet Earth. That's where it yeah, comes from. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Good, Good job. <laughs> My number one scary moment of course in the kitchen is breaking or <laughs> dropping any kind of plate or glass. Um, does it happen often here? Sometimes, not so much, mm -hmm. but it's, everybody's very contrite when it happens. <laughs> Breakage happens, you know, that's what keeps us in business. That's one it way is. to look at it's it. Keeps us in business. I like that. <laughs> that keeps us in business, yeah. Or puts us out if we break it, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> You want to get a little dirty? Yeah, dirty. That was the word. Right. Okay. What, what, yeah, what? Get, get some clay on your hands. Get some clay on my hands. It's not mud in your eyes, clay on your hands. There it is. Okay. Just like that movie. 
<laughs> you know, right? Come on, you have to know in this business. Oh no, I messed it up. Oh no. Oh no, Maria, save me. No. Nope. Tell me, tell me, help me. <laughs> Come on, Maria, it's me and you. And she can't do anything anymore. <laughs> oh no! Hold on, I can fix it, I can fix it. Don't, don't look, Maria, don't look, I can fix it. Stop laughing. I can start over. <laughs> If you like that episode and you want to see more of Chokanin, click here. Created the first Sushi Chef Institute in America, a place for students to learn sushi without the grueling years of a.